So hi there and welcome to another episode on NetSport Radio. I'm Al Kingsley, CEO at NetSport and all sorts of different roles in education. But today I'm really um, excited and pleased to be having the opportunity to have a chat with Justin Weinberg, founder of Active Learning. Justin, welcome to the show. Hey Al, thanks so much for having me on. I really uh, appreciate being here. Uh, really looking forward to talking to, to you. Um, I think often we get very focused and, and narrow in our educational subjects when we're looking in our schools and performance. And whenever there's a chance to talk about, well, some say STEM, now more, more typically we talk about STEAM, the art slip in there as well. Uh, but it's really nice to talk about on a broader scale about some of the solutions out there to really foster that sector, which I think is the number one when it comes to looking at transferable skills into the workplace and demand right now. Before we dive into active learning and have a chat about that, Justin, um, as a starter, uh, your journey through the education sector has been a fairly unique one. Would you mind sharing a little bit about your journey, first of all? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, th throughout my career, um, I've been a scientist, I've been an educator, and I've always been in love with how technology can make a difference in people's lives. Um, our company, Active Learning, is, is really the intersection of all those things for me. Uh, specifically, things for um, me and EdTech really got started back in 2010 when I was in college and I was doing tutoring uh, pretty regularly. And I ended up teaming up with my current co-founder to create this little hobby app for delivering chemistry video lessons on a smartphone to students. Um, thing is, you have to remember, this was 2010 and video lessons in education at that time were barely a thing. Uh, but our theory was that smartphones were exploding and were clearly the future of where many industries were going. Uh, so we thought, hey, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool and effective if we could use an app as a delivery mechanism for students to get and watch these videos uh, right on their phones? And we turned out to be right. Um, we put this app out and all of a sudden we got over 500,000 downloads on it in a couple of years. And we didn't promote it or market it or anything. Students just really loved it. Uh, and this really told us two things uh, at the end of the day. Uh, number one, there were clearly a lot of students uh, struggling in STEM who need help. And two, they were really looking at their phone uh, as a way to learn. So that got me really obsessed with thinking about um, how I could take what we had built to the next level. And I knew that next level had to be centered around active learning. Uh, because when you're talking about STEM disciplines, whether, whether it's chemistry or physics or math or engineering, um, it's really about students sitting down and struggling and solving problems and iterating um, through that process. Um, so, you know, video lessons are nice, but we build and, and they have a place and they have a lot of value, but ultimately it's passive. You know, someone's watching someone else kind of teach you something. Um, so fast forward a few years, I decided to pursue uh, my PhD in chemical engineering at, at Carnegie Mellon um, here in Pittsburgh. So uh, I'm doing that, but I'm also still thinking about this ed tech problem, this active learning problem and how we could solve it. Uh, and one day I had this idea for how we could tackle the, the problem with the part of chemistry that deals with drawing and visualizing molecular structures. So I got really excited. I called up Igor, who's my current co-founder at Active. And I said, hey, I have this awesome idea. We have to go build it. And, and that, in a, in a nutshell, is how we kind of started the company. And uh, of course, there's a lot more story after that. But uh, hopefully that uh, gives everyone a sense of where we came from. Now, that's, that's really helpful. Thanks for sharing. I now have a mental picture of you as the... Uh the next iteration of Professor Proton of uh, Big Bang Theory, with that kind of <laughs> engaging that love of science with learners, which is is kind of the key. Um, and you're right, you know, technology moves at such a pace that it creates these, these fresh opportunities. I'm not sure if it will translate across the Atlantic, but but my, my love of science and chemistry was receiving at Christmas a, a chemistry set back in the late 70s that kind of had all the... the the different experiments you could undertake. And of course, now we've got the beauty in the palm of our hand of all sorts of resources that can bring those to life and, and inspire us. You've obviously focused around the, the science areas and typically, certainly across our schools in the UK, and we see it around the world, STEM subjects have been harder to teach, but probably more importantly, to actually get student engagement um, in the STEM subjects. And, and often, and I, I appreciate luckily and fortunately that the journey is moving often we've also found it harder for girls to get them to actually get engaged and motivate with some of the stem subjects how do you think what you've been doing can kind of help mitigate some of that 
Yeah, absolutely. This is such uh, an important topic of discussion and, and something we, we think about constantly, um, really getting at the heart of, you know, how do we engage students uh, in STEM um, and how do we help them learn more effectively? Um, I would say there's there's three major things we could be doing to increase engagement for these students uh, and help them in these disciplines. Um, the first and foremost thing we need to be doing is, is we need to start listening to the abundance of research out there uh, in the literature uh, that's telling us to get away from the traditional lecture model uh, for these types of courses as fast as possible and move towards more active learning methodologies. Um, unfortunately, if we still take a broad look at what a STEM course looks like for, let's say, a college student today, um, there are still far too many courses being taught in a way where a student sits down in a classroom or a lecture hall and a professor just stands up and talks uh, for 60 to 90 minutes straight. Um, this simply isn't an effective way uh, for a student to be learning in the year 2022. Uh, and this just isn't my opinion. Um, there, there have been entire meta-analyses uh, performed of research studies on active learning in STEM where over 65 studies have collectively shown that incorporating active learning and problem solving uh, and discussion right in the lecture um, in STEM courses specifically really improves student outcomes and decreases uh, failure rates uh, in these courses. Um, this has also been shown to disproportionately benefit first generation college students uh, and minority students as well, uh, which of course we want to promote um, in, in the STEM disciplines. So, so in a nutshell, we need to continue the trend towards more flipped classrooms, more recitation or discussion sections, and just, just really accelerate it. Yeah, um, it's interesting you said that, Justin. You, you, you mentioned the flip word, which always uh, perks my ears. And we think about flipped classrooms and that concept of the student really in, engaging in the subject initially and then kind of bringing that back for discussion. Of course, with sometimes we think, well, how does that translate in the science realm where the students won't necessarily have access to the equipment or resources? But I guess from what you're saying, in many ways, active learning allows a, a, some degree of a bridge in that kind of process to, to, to facilitate that active learning. Absolutely. That's that's one of the primary use cases of our platform um, is to not only support active learning outside of class where students can be doing homework or practice or quizzes on their own time, but actually how we can help the faculty and the instructor uh, engage their students in the classroom. Uh, in many cases, that may look like something like a flipped classroom or it's helping um, them kind of wean off on uh, that traditional lecture model and insert a few engaging questions um, in the middle of a traditional lecture. You know, there's sort of a, that spectrum that exists from the traditional model to the, to the flipped classroom. And um, not everyone's gonna get there overnight, um, but you, we very much um, see it as a purpose of the platform that we built to encourage faculty to get there and, and make it as easy as possible. Uh, for them to uh, facilitate active learning at scale. So um, if I bumped into you, uh, I don't know, let's say ISTE uh, later this uh, this year, or actually not that, not that far away now, uh, and we were talking about um, active learning, and I'd, I'd say I've not met you before, how would you encapsulate what you what the experience is for a learner using your resources and how it differs from, from other resources available? Yeah, so... Um, one of the major differences uh, in our platform versus some of the others is that it's specifically built for STEM disciplines. Um, unfortunately, the, the learning solutions that are out there today are mostly built in a generic way where someone creates a learning platform and they load content onto it uh, from the humanities to the STEM disciplines. Uh, and that gets the job done, uh, but it leaves a lot of opportunity on the table uh, because there's no real focus around the particular teaching and learning challenges that come up um, in things like math and science, uh, which are a bit unique and, and, and a bit deeper um, than something in, in the more social sciences and humanities and things like that. So because we have taken an approach where we think discipline first, um, we have gotten to really reimagine the way that students uh, learn and absorb some of the key topics in um, math and science. So um, we started the company in chemistry and we've developed specific tools around things like um, helping students with dimensional analysis, draw and visualize molecular structures, 
uh, name chemical compounds, work with chemical equations. Um, in math, um, which we've just launched, we've now reimagined the way students solve uh, equations and work step by step through um, you know, a problem. In other platforms, that may just be a multiple choice question or a, a problem where students just enter a number at, at their final answer instead of capturing their work. Um, so because we're not distracted by trying to serve 50 courses at once, uh, we really get to go deep into the discipline. And that's one of the major uh, differentiators um, when we talk to instructors about our platform. It, it sounds from, from, from you explaining it that there's some kind of strands there that link in with the kind of evidence around that kind of dual coding where there's the both the message but the visual to allow greater understanding of, of content. Is that fair to say? Yes. Um, so um, when, we, when we go in and solve some of these teaching and learning challenges in our platform and develop content, uh, we, we specifically craft user interfaces from the ground up um, to help students learn. Um, for example, we were talking about uh, dimensional analysis, uh, which uh, is the skill that powers things like students' ability to do unit conversions and mole calculations and stoichiometry and, and chemistry problems, basically like how one amount converts into a, another amount and how to work with units of measure and things like that. So um, we crafted and designed an interface from the ground up that allows students to actually like drag and drop values and, and unit tiles uh, into a scaffold of dimensional analysis. So it actually helps them get reinforced uh, how to solve these types of problems and actually allows them to show their work in a user-friendly format. Um, we also use color coding, um, uh, like red, red tiles and blue tiles to help students see the difference between values and units because they often struggle with that. So um, it's really about sort of getting away from that traditional content and assessment format where it's just there, here's A, B, C, D options, or here's just a box and enter a number as your answer. It's really about getting students to show their work, getting some color coding, visualization, scaffolding uh, into the process. Love, love it. Anybody listening in right now might be thinking, and, and sometimes it's often the most simple questions that are the kind of the key ones we, we forget in our conversations. So what about platforms? Is it uh, an app for specific platforms, browser-based? What, what devices could a school utilize your um, active learning on? Uh, any device. Uh, and that in itself is, is also a, a, very, a very important philosophy uh, of our platform and how we built it. Um, we specifically design our platform to be mobile first. Um, so it's actually designed for the phone first, and then it scales up uh, to whatever device students happen to be using. So on a phone and a tablet, like an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device, we actually have an app that students use. Uh, they download it from the a Apple App Store, the Google Play Store. On um, a more traditional laptop or desktop or Chromebook, um, the students will use their web browser, uh, like uh, Chrome or Firefox browser. And it's the same experience no matter where they are. Um, this is really important to make sure that we're increasing access um, to the material for students. So they're not just limited to that traditional laptop or desktop to do their work. We see a lot of learning tools um, that are out there for students today really kind of uh, limit them to those more traditional devices. And you yeah. can't get students, if you, if you design like that, you can't get students on the go. Uh, so we have students uh, on a bus, on a train, in a car, on campus somewhere with some downtime. They're just able to take out their phone and engage in a couple homework activities or a couple practice activities. Um, and sometimes we work with students in um, challenging areas where all they have is a phone and they have to go somewhere or, or go to the library or something to get access to uh, a laptop or desktop to do work. Um, so having that phone is, is a, it's a huge deal uh, to a lot of students. Um, sure. And at the, end, at the end of the day, 93% of our students uh, on our platform have told us the mobile accessibility is important to helping them engage and increase uh, access to their assignments. So. Um, it's 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 fundamental. Support. That's really good to hear. And you kind of read my mind in a way, because I think some of the lessons we've learned over the last couple of years, certainly with the kind of flex to, to greater use of digital within our curriculum, has been about making sure that we have, where possible, solutions in our schools that are platform agnostic. Uh, and in terms of digital equity, it's great having solutions, but not if only a percentage of our cohort can actually engage with them. So developing from the hand held up is absolutely the kind of big tick in the box that that's really really good to hear um as a kind of a roundup 
Um, people listening, are, I hope, are going to be saying this sounds like something we really should check out. So how can people find out more and what kind of resources could they have a look at just to get a sense of, of the scope and flexibility of the platform? Sure. Uh, well, um, you know, I think we have a pretty great website, um, which is at active.com, A-K-T-I-V.com. Um, so we have a, a really nice overview there of our um, chemistry product, which is what started the company, um, which is Active Chemistry, and our newest product, which is now uh, Active Mathematics. So you can get some really nice visuals and demos of uh, how the platform works for students and instructors and educators. Um, also on our website, we have a number of resources um, in addition to just a product overview. Um, one is a, a series of um, um, kind of what we call success stories, where you can hear faculty uh, um, hear faculty stories and their view and students' view on how they've used the platform in different use cases. Um, you know, not every college, not every environment is equal. So we think it's really important to highlight, you know, how this is working in a community college, how this is working in a big lecture hall. How does this work for chemistry majors? How does this work for non-chemistry majors? How does this work for organic chemistry? So we have all these different sort of uh, scenarios where faculty and students can, can see um, how this is working. Uh, we also provide a number of other resources just around best practices and active learning, um, instructors um, who do certain things and research, and we provide those for free. Um, so uh, anyone can learn about you know, what's going on in people's classrooms and get inspired and get ideas. We put out newsletters, guides, free webinars uh, pretty much throughout the year as well. That's lovely to hear. Music to my ears. One of the other trending themes for the right reasons over the last couple of years has been about evidence-informed ed tech and actually looking at technology where you have got those case studies, that white paper, those white papers that really showcase how it's had an impact in schools. Um, so again, really useful that you've got those resources ready to go. Um, Justin, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Again, for anybody listening in, website to find out more is active.com, A-K-T-I-V.com. Um, definitely worth checking out. There's some free resources there. And by the sounds of it, a great way of getting um, a better insight and a better learning journey when it comes to those STEM subjects. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much, Al. It's great to be here.